because beyond just the line going down on the chart, Bitcoin's price plunging, you are seeing sort of the ripple effects in the broader ecosystem when it comes to some of the companies involved. And it feels like we've already seen a lot of contagion already. But when you look across the landscape, are we going to see more shoes dropping here? Well, you know, we've got Sam, haven't we? Sam Bankman Freed, the white knight, coming in and trying to save the day. And, uh, you know, in every sort of crisis, I guess you need somebody like him to come up and at least try to sort of reduce the contagion that's going on. But by the same token, actually, uh, CZ, the, the guy from Binance, the guy who runs Binance, uh, the world's biggest exchange, um, was slightly critical of that approach and saying basically that if there is trouble, if there are bad companies or companies that are doing really badly, maybe you should just let them, you know, sidle off into bankruptcy <laughs> or something of that nature. And then uh, he said words to the effect that, uh, I'm paraphrasing him slightly here, but words to the effect that then you have a clean slate upon which you can build a base for the next boom. I mean, we know from 2008, 2009, of course, when you prop up um, failing banks and failing other companies, as governments did back then, then you're left with all kinds of legacy problems that just haunt the economy for years to come. Okay, well, Glenn, you talk about a, a clean slate to build off from. Are we at that point yet where we can see potentially an end to the crypto winner, something in the form of a meaningful rally, or are we going to be stuck here in this $20,000 ballpark for some time? Well, funnily enough, that survey that you just mentioned there kind of, um, I call me a contrarian, but it kind of cheered me up in a weird kind of way because, <laughs> bear with me here, bear with me. Um, I had a mentor uh, some years ago, a legendary trader called Ed Seikota. Uh, you can Google him. He was he was absolute legend, made a fortune, and uh, revolutionized uh, trading techniques. And basically, he had an indicator that he used to call the magazine indicator. It wasn't very scientific, but what it basically meant was that when he saw on Barron's magazine a headline like Raging Bull with a big picture of a bull, you know, rearing and uh, it's got its horns and it's got steam coming out of its nose, when he saw that kind of thing on a front cover, he would go, well, we must be at the top of the market. And likewise, you could kind of infer that when you start seeing headlines in newspapers that say, Bitcoin is dead, the <laughs> crypto market is finished, it's all over, then you can kind of infer infer from that 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 might mean that we're near a bottom. Doesn't necessarily mean we're right at the bottom now, but we're nearer the bottom than we are to the top. I, and and th that kind of survey gives me confidence, you see, that when people are starting to feel really negative and we're seeing all those really bad yeah. headlines in the Financial Times and, uh, well, it's British newspaper, but, you know, in, in all the, the financial press, the Wall Street Journal, then it makes me start thinking that things are going to get better soon. Well, let's talk about the, the feelings of individual groups of people as well, because in that same survey we've been referencing is actually retail that has soured more on crypto than the institutional players. And you've been looking back at the history of price action over the last decade, and you think institutions actually have played a massive role in the kind of immense volatility and difficult trading environment that this has become. Can you just walk us through that? Yeah, I went back and looked at the chart of Bitcoin all the way going back to 2012, and I looked at it in quite some detail, every single movement, every single little chart pattern that formed. And frankly, for years and years, it was just textbook. It was a trader's dream to trade Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies when they came along, because they were literally like textbook patterns. You'd have a bull market, and it would, it would start like that, and then you'd get a little trading range and a resistance line, and bang, it would go up through it, and then another range, and then up through through it, you know, my hands disappearing <laughs> off the top of the screen. But you, you know, you get the idea. It would, you'd get the lovely movement upwards, and then the market would crash for a couple of years, and then you'd get the bigger upward movement, and it, and it went in those waves. And then 2021 happened, and mm. everything changed. Suddenly, you had weird things, weird things going on with the price, making unexpected moves. It was much, much harder for traders from that point on. And actually, the institutions that were getting in and, and employing complex strategies that were, of course, making those price movements more complicated and more reminding me more of the Forex market, in fact, mm. those same institutional traders were wrong-footed because usually what happens is the rich people buy at the bottom and sell at the top. They've been doing that with every single uh, Bitcoin wave so far up until 2021 when they all started buying after it had peaked right at the top in November last right. year and loads of them then had to um, sell 
much lower down uh, in recent weeks and months, mm -hmm. uh, which must have annoyed them very much and perhaps actually accounts for the fact that so many institutional people are keen to get back in because they've had their fingers burned and maybe they want to have another crack at it. Well, Glenn, we don't have much time left, but take us now to 2022 and beyond because we're at a moment where, like you say, maybe some of the institutions come back in. But according to that survey, I mean, you have seen retail sour a little bit. When does retail come back in? Well, look, traditionally in both stock markets and now in the crypto market, retail, unfortunately, tends to get in too late. Mm. Uh, you know, as a trading educator, I try to persuade them not to get in too late. I tried to persuade people to get in in July 2020, for example, which was when I saw the market starting to take off. That's when I got in. And I was getting out uh, in the early part of 2021 from Bitcoin with a sort of 400, 500% profit. Meanwhile, lots of people who'd read my book uh, were, were saying, oh, it's time to get in, isn't it? Because th that was when the retail boom was starting to happen, but it was already too late. So, frankly, if retail are pessimistic now, that's not necessarily a bad sign for the market because they tend to get optimistic rather later in the bull market instead of at the beginning.